I can't believe we just recorded episode number two. And I hit end. I know it had been recording the whole time. And no video shows up. No audio shows up. No nothing shows up. It's as if it wasn't being recorded, even though I know the whole time it was being recorded. But you don't want to hear us rambling about this. We're going to move on. We're going to be moving in and grooving. And we're going to get welcome. Back. We're going to get over <laughs> ourselves. And if it sounds like we've had these conversations before, obviously this in no way could it <laughs> possibly in any way go in the same direction as our last conversation did but this is just a new conversation hitting on the same topics perhaps that we've already talked about um can, can you start off by telling me about your asthma question yeah h- happily i hope your audio sounds better than it does to me in my ears um, um. <laughs> 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 we don't have to just film a trash here me- <laughs> mess with your like volume on the back this this button on the back it was all the way up is this better yeah yeah okay am i good here yeah Yeah, you were like max to the ceiling sorry i was screaming um (laughs) hi everybody thanks for coming back for episode two which feels like episode three zoe's busting out a beverage now um Hi, everybody. I think I might have adult asthma. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, 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 so we got to record today, earlier, the first episode. And um, Kenzie's like, yeah, just a second. I'm ready to record. I just need to get my asthma under control, which is concerning since um, I've known my sister her entire life and she's never had asthma before. So this is a... So in the, in the, past, in the past two weeks, I've had, I've had what I can only explain to be three <laughs> asthma attacks. <laughs> And they, I think, are triggered by the cold air. And um, I'm being really distracted by you right now. Um, I start coughing and wheezing. And it feels like someone's sitting on my chest. And I start crying. And then I'm hacking up. And I have to, like, lay down and breathe really, really, really slowly. And it takes, like, 30 minutes to recover from them. Anyways, I'm going to the doctor tomorrow. Um, It could also just be, like... A, a lingering, you know, side effect to an illness I had. Um, but I took two COVID tests today, and it's not COVID, thank goodness. So um, we'll see. Um, but I also hear that you're going to the doctor tomorrow. Yes, I am also going to the doctor tomorrow. This is my follow-up appointment for my ADHD assessment situation. Uh, this, So I got my blood taken a couple days ago and I looked at my results my blood I got good blood folks if you were ever worried about your blood you shouldn't be because it's fantastic um except there was like one cholesterol that was too high but it was like my good cholesterol was too high so like sorry for overachieving I guess um so I have that appointment and so I'm actually taking our father along with us because then he has eye therapy after that so he's tagging along for my appointment and then I'm driving him to his therapy and so it's just a day full of doctors for us all. Now, since you brought up our beloved father, I have a fun story to share about him. Dad, you know him. I do. <laughs> you love him. I do know he's, our father. He's an icon. So our father has worn not two, but one pair of socks his entire life. Not one singular pair of socks, but he's only ever worn black socks. Um, and so... Zoe informed me the first time around that sometimes he wears gold toes, but what I've noticed is he has a full black sock, okay? My mother was ordering him a Christmas gift from Dix. She, being the savvy queen that she is, wanted to get free shipping, so to, to do that, she bought a pair of, a pack of socks. Um, did she buy the all black socks? No, she did not. She bought this, like, beautiful rainbow color set. And she had to return something to Dix, and she was like, hey, dad. Um, she, she didn't call him dad, but <laughs> she, she's like, hey, Mickey, do you want me to return these socks? And he was like, no, I'll wear them. So every day this week, he's been wearing a different color of sock, and yesterday he had a yellow sock, and today I need to call and ask him, because I told him I would, what color of sock he's wearing. And that's just, like, the pure nice story of dad that just makes my heart feel warm yes such a great guy um 
weird that I haven't noticed his socks, but also I'm not a, a very observant person. But today he was wearing a sweatshirt. Um, it was a Gearing Hawk sweatshirt. And I was like, hey, that, that looks nice. He was like, thanks. My daughter got it for me. <laughs> just like, Did you get it for yeah, him? Yeah, as if I didn't know. Uh. It was this weird role playing thing you did, I think. I don't know. I got him I got him a sweatsuit for Christmas, which he asked for, it, and he's worn it like a few times now. Oh, yeah, and it's very cute. I know, he looks adorable. I was afraid because they're kinda like joggery. Like they're a little tighter than what this man wore back in the he's day. Got some chicken legs um, on him. He does. He he has lean mean fighting machine legs and they look great on him and i was afraid he was gonna wear them but he's been wearing them he's been wearing the new hat i got him and apparently he's wearing your sweatshirt he's just i'm gonna see only wears the hat you get him something he's gonna wear it he's always repping your place of work which so i want to talk about your place of work um because i was thinking about the other day i'm in a very stressful period of farming right now like prices just are not good I'm making drastic decisions left and rice, right and rice to deal with that. Um, I just, like, I'm stressed all the time. And so then I was thinking, do you get stressed at work? Um, no. <laughs> Sometimes, yes, but mostly no. Um, for those that don't remember or don't know, I work at a museum and I work in special events. So we put on events for people to come and enjoy. And I would say 90% of the problems I encounter are not predictable and they happen in the moment. It'll be like a catering issue or a staffing issue, like someone's calling in sick or, you know, the printer is running out of the paper we need. You know, it's something that you have to figure out in the moment and you can't really prepare for those sorts of problems to come up so I don't actually find it to be very stressful I don't like sit and get anxious about events like that um and really when I was looking at jobs and and thinking about school and what I wanted to do with my life I wanted to pick a not particularly stressful job like I think farming as our brother once said incredibly boring and stressful at the same time yes yes and like I think like when I was in high school and I was thinking about what I wanted to do, I think a little part of me was like, this is the safe option. Like, I know I'll get the job if I apply for it. Um, and like, I'll just be working for dad. Like, dad won't fire me. Um, which is like crazy because it's like a very stressful job. Um, I don't think it needs to be a stressful job because like it's outside factors. Like, I don't determine the price of corn. I don't determine if we get rain. Mm -hmm. I don't determine the weather. But I take it very personally <laughs> when I'm not doing good at marketing or like the yields are low. Or in my case, I had both this year. <laughs> um, so yeah. like my my worries are like, will the farm survive? Whereas like you're not worried if the museum's going to survive. Like you're worried about the guests having no. a good time at a party. Exactly, and. Um... I have a lot of control and I can do as much planning as I can. And my boss has always really instilled in me, like, if you've done all the planning you can, like, it's that it's going to be fine. Everything else is out of your control, which I understand a lot of your things are out of your control and you still stress about them. But I'm, I'm at a place where I'm pretty good at, like, letting go of, of things that I can't control, which great segue to our ins and outs of 2024 out is like being stressed about things you can't control yes out the thing that i keep seeing that like is on my page everyone is currently doing 75 hard and or cold plunging and it's out for me it's out for me i think like but i think it's out for me because i'm seeing people do these things and i'm like oh i'm not doing enough um because like simply it would be insane for me to try to add things to my schedule also like I'm hauling corn in the cold all day. I feel like that kind of, like, I know it's different from an ice bath, but it feels like an ice bath. And I get the same, like, adrenaline rush when it's done of, like, wow, I was freezing cold, and now I'm in warm, and I have a little bit more energy. Um, but, like, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm overseeing people post about it, but only for my own reasons of, like, seeing it and being like, I'm not doing enough, if that makes sense. Interesting. It's like FOMO, but not FOMO. I don't have that. 
I don't see other people killing it and me being like, oh, I'm not killing it. Um, also partly because I am killing it. But uh, no, I don't see people doing two 45 minute workouts a day and I'm like, oh, I should do that. I think that's insane. I think if you're going from not working out to doing two 45 minute workouts a day, that's so unattainable and just a shock for the body. Like, I just can't even imagine trying to keep up with that sort of schedule. Yeah, and I'm just concerned. Like, I'm concerned about the people doing it across the Midwest in the next week just because, like, I know where we're at, we're getting below, like, freezing. It's going to feel like below freezing. And, like, one of the premises of 75 Hard is that one of the workouts is outside. And it gets dark at, like, 5 o'clock here. And so I'm just worried about the, like, the liability of, like, someone out in the cold trying to work out in the dark, like, because they're trying to do this mental toughness thing where I'm, like, maybe the mentally smart thing would be better than the mentally tough thing. Like, I, like, I just wonder, I wonder if in the parameters, if it's, like, hey, if this is a state of emergency, like, because the whole thing is, like, if you don't hit your goal every day, you have to start back at the beginning. But, like, is is there an exception for insane weather? I know. I feel like we need to say what 75 is because 75 hard is because I actually don't think a lot of people know exactly what it is. Yeah. So um, dad's calling me. It's two workouts that are 45 minutes long. One is outside and one it, like can be whatever it is. Um, you have to take a progress picture every day. You have to read 10 pages of like a educational or like self-helpy book and you have to follow a diet of some sort and drink a lot of water you have to drink so much water yeah (laughs) do you want to answer that and see um i'm gonna send him a text to rooney he's calling me a second time Um, oh he just hung up (laughs) Uh, i'm just gonna call him and we'll edit it out Okay. okay Maybe we'll keep it in. Maybe he'll have some. True. Maybe and maybe he'll have some advice for us. Maybe he will. Your call has been forwarded to voicemail. Dad. Weird. <laughs> well, we'll see. Maybe he'll call me. Yeah, perhaps. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so yeah, so you have to do all these things. <laughs> Hello. What's up? Hello. Uh, mom needs to know exactly what time we're leaving. Okay, tomorrow we are leaving at, um, let's do 4.45 at the, no, let's do 4.30. I think 4.30 is good too. 4.45 would make me nervous. Yeah. Are we going to leave from here? Um, yes, we can leave from there. Okay, that would be lovely. I have a... Okay, cool. Yeah, you and dad are both live on the podcast right now. We recorded for a full hour, and then my uh, video didn't save. Um, so we're doing a, a bridge version <laughs> now. Um, but yes, that, that works. So in case if, you, if you're if you going to call Kenzie next, she is also right here right now. Hey, dad, what, what color are your socks today? Oh, yeah, Kenzie wants to know what color your socks were today. Oh, I got black ones on. Oh, that's pretty boring dude okay well sorry for the interruption oh no you're fine see you guys tomorrow okay yep bye um yeah we have our that could have taken a way worse turn because we're also waiting for dad to get biopsy results and like had it been a biopsy result live on the podcast (laughs) That would have been. I'm so happy. It's just about what time you're leaving tomorrow. Yeah. So yeah. So tomorrow is like they call it the first look. It's at our like wedding venue. We go and we try like the appetizers and the foods, and we get a look at tablescapes and stuff. It's like everyone who's getting married in the next six months like all goes to this like hour long event, and there's like different time slots and stuff. So yeah, we have that tomorrow. But um, it was up to four people, and since mom and dad are monetarily contributing to the wedding they got first dibs <laughs> so okay back to 75 hard yes one two workouts crazy like just one workout should be okay um i would never take a picture of myself so for that reason i'm immediately out um i like reading although i've read a couple self-help books not a not a huge fan 
I actually listened to a I think what I've learned is 75 Hard is actually not for me. Yeah, no, I don't think it's for me either. And I actually listened to a podcast that's critiquing self-help books. And they just, like, talk about how, like, crazy they all are and unrealistic and just, like, dumb. And it's, like, it's kind of ruined in a good way all self-help books for me. Yeah. yeah, I've read some. And, like, you know, you can always, like, pull bits and pieces and be like, oh, that's a good reminder and whatever. But I think... Yeah, it's a it's an interesting genre for sure. Yeah, and I think there are definitely like ones that I've read that have been like, oh, this is like helped me. Mm-hmm. More probably just motivated me because I don't think I've ever like followed any steps of a self help book. I've just thought like, oh, yeah. these are good ideas. Um, okay, Zoe. okay, Zoe, is the Stanley Cup in or out for twenty twenty four? This is gonna be controversial, but for me at this time, it's out. Um, I have, disclaimer, I have three Stanleys. I did not purchase any of them. I was given them, but I'm a fan of them in general. I think they're cute. I think they're fun. I, we, I, we love like a pick your own color type situation. I love a hydrated queen. Um, the actual like picking it up and carrying it around sometimes just, just does not make sense because like I have one of the large ones. It's like you can fit two full bottles of water in there. It gets heavy. It's a lot. Like, do I ever need to have two full bottles of water with me at all times? Probably no. Um, but it's it's nice to have, like, an attractor if I have a good cup holder for it. Um, but, like, yeah. this thing online where people have, like, 45 different colors and they're, like, collecting them, I'm just not – I'm not convinced it's a collector's item. I guess, obviously, you can collect whatever you want to collect. But, like, my thing is, like, the whole premise is that this is a something – like, you're using it to reduce plastic waste, like – you have this Mm -hmm. one reusable thing why do we have 45 reusable things well i just saw on the talk the other day about the people lining up outside target at like 3 a.m because they were releasing um like a special edition target starbucks pink and they sold out like within seconds and it was like this crazy thing and i you know people have been doing that forever they camp out for iphones they camp out for i don't know tvs that's just like not me i don't think there's anything i'd camp out for besides taylor swift era tour tickets um the airpods have left yeah i realized that they weren't connected so there wasn't really a point of having them in um but yeah i agree and oh my goodness our taylor swift journey was just like something of its own podcast. Talk about the Great War. It was a Great War. It, it was just so sad when you were crying and you were like, "We're not going to see Taylor after you spent so okay. long hoping." Listen, for tickets. I'll give a, a brief, a brief, brief synopsis. Um, Zoe and I have been Swifties for like a long time, um, and we saw the Reputation tour, and it was three hours of nonstop entertainment. And so I was like, "Zoe, we have to relive this. We have to go to the Eras tour." When Midnight's came out, three days after it was released, I got Midnight Rain tattooed on my arm. Like, I was committed to to Taylor. And I, because I had bought merch from the Midnight's album, I got, like, a super fan code so I could get tickets before it opened a general admission. And I was in the Ticketmaster line for, like, six hours or something. And um, when it was finally my turn, they just, like, I kept putting tickets in my cart, and then they just kept disappearing, because, like, that's what was happening to everybody. And, and, and um, it was also, remember. like, there was, like, okay, here are two tickets for, like, $1,000. Yeah, and we it was, like, gonna... the only thing that was left were horrible nosebleeds, like, behind the stage where you couldn't even see her, or super expensive floor seats, which I wasn't going to buy either one of those and so I was really sad and I called Zoe and I was crying and I called my mom and I was like I love her and we're never going to get to see her and it all worked out and I ended up getting to see her twice so um it was fine but the craziest thing of the the whole thing is so I have a friend who's really into Taylor Swift and so like all of my friends were trying to get tickets too and she, she like she was one of the lucky ones she, like, got in. She was immediately in. Like, she got her tickets. Like, she was on Ticketmaster for five minutes. And she was, like, texting her group message. She's, like, it's not that hard, you guys. Like, you just go in. You just get your tickets. Like, I don't know. I don't understand. And I don't think she, like, she didn't see any of the things that were going on online. Like, 
She just had a... Yeah, and, like, I was scrolling Twitter, and I was, like, in the trenches with the other sisters. Yeah, but plot twist so so in the moment like there was jealousy for sure i was obviously oh, absolutely. so happy for her um but there was jealousy and then plot twist of the century you end up getting tickets not only for one but for two of the tour dates Shows, yeah. and then my poor friend had a conflict couldn't use her tickets and then we had already, like, you had booked your flight and your travel, and so we couldn't switch days mm-hmm. with them, so they didn't get to go. And so it was, like, oh, tragic, tragic all around. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that I – but I didn't have to go anywhere. Honestly, if I had to go somewhere, I don't know if I would have gotten the tickets. There's just, like, very few things I would, like, line up for at 3 in the morning to get. I can't think of a single thing that I would – and and like, do you collect anything? Do you have any collections? Um, I have some crystals. Um, <laughs> I guess that's a little bit of a collection. But no, I'm a person that like, if I have something for a long period of time, it makes me more attached to it. So like, I have this Coach wallet that I got in high school, and it like it went in and out of fashion. It's absolutely in no way in fashion. Like it's like snake skin. I think the snake print's gonna come back. Yeah, it's snake skin. <laughs> it's been in and out of fashion like three times. Um, but, like, at one point, I gave it to Kenzie for, like, a year or two. And then I just took it back because mm-hmm. it's just, like, the perfect size. Like, all I can stick in there it's is, a like. good wallet. Yeah, it's a couple cards and my chapstick. And, like, we're good to go. Um, but, like, the fact that I've had it so long, I'm like, this is just me. This is a part of me. Um, as opposed to being like, oh, this is an old, worn-out piece of garbage. Um, so, like, I'm just, I, I think I'm just built different. Um <laughs> Not saying it's good or. I think that's good. I think that's like how everyone should like aim to be. You you like want to have good things that last you and that like become sentimental. That's not me, but I think that's what I try to be. Yeah, well, you're the bad collector, and you've been the bad collector since a young age. I know, and I try to think about it like psychologically why I'm so into purses, and I've been into purses since I could carry a purse, like literally like two or three. I like had purses yeah you were a baby with day i have i and i don't know why i just like i love them i think they're so fun to have they make an outfit they fit you at no matter what size you are and i don't know i just love them but i definitely need i'm getting to an age where quality over quantity for sure but just like really investing into like nice pieces that I want to use every single day. Um, so I'm slowly like, you know, getting rid of some, some purses here or there, but I mean, it's a lifestyle. I love it. Yeah. I am jealous of your, some like I, I'm jealous of your bag collection because like I have like one. And so it's like, if it doesn't go with my outfit, I'm like, okay, I just won't bring anything. Um, so there's like, also like, there's a good thing about like having, quality options whereas like you know i have one belt and we all know what that belt looks like and it's not good um so yeah say belt yeah you remember the belt <laughs> oh i remember the belt <laughs> I, I, sorry i, just I have, have momentary lapse of yeah i have nothing. one belt it's a hand-me-down from tanner and kenzie was home and she saw my <laughs> belt and she's like that's a belt <laughs> and it it is a belt it's not a good belt but it it's a belt. I forgot about the belt. I actually don't own a belt, so I that's not something I need to buy. Um, my pants just they either fit me or they fall. Yeah. Okay. So so so, so seventy five hards out. Um, overconsumption of goods out. What's in? Um, saying no to people. Oh, yes, that's one of my New Year's resolutions. Yeah. Um, what else Not is specifically in? to people, but just like in general, if something doesn't align with what I want to do, I need to just like, cause my, my thing is like uh, always an immediate yes. And then the next couple days I'm like, why did I say yes to this? Like I need to think things out. I need to stop the self hatred talk and making fun of myself. That's out. Um, what's in podcasting with your sister friend. Always in. Always down for a goofy time. You know, there another thing that's in. Let me tell you, 
rom-coms. I went to the movies. Oh, I love a movie this weekend. experience. Tell me about your movie. I do too. I mean, okay, so we go to what is called the murder theater. Wait, what? Why? It's it's an AMC. <laughs> okay, and it's crazy how drastic the AMCs can be throughout Manhattan. You can go to one. It's like the layback seats, the comfy cushions, like a wonderful experience. You go to ours and you feel like you're fighting for your life. Let me, we, oh, this is me and my friend Eleanor go to the same theater every time to see the, see our, our movies. Okay. But wait, if there are, murder theater. if there are multiple ones and you go to the murder one, why don't you go to a different one? No, it's the closest to us. Okay. Convenient. Like it's walkable to both of our apartments, okay. which is what I love. And um, if you go on Yelp, there's like only bad reviews. And one of them that there was poo in the movie theater, <laughs> like on the floor inside. <laughs> so just to like really set the tone. Um, it looks like it's from 2004 Cinemark, rural Ohio. Like it's just, it's, it's old, it's dingy. The floors are sticky. The lights are flickering. There's a lot of dark corners anyone could come at you from any direction um but we walk in i'm like i got my ticket i'm here to see sydney sweeney and um anyone but you and i go i always get a small popcorn and i get a small icy i love the blue raspberry load that thing up with butter and then we take the scariest elevator. It's two floors down. Wait, you have to take an elevator so, in this AMC. <laughs> so everything in Manhattan is built vertically. So it's always like very, very small with multiple layers. Two floors down. And the, the, the elevator is the size of me and Eleanor. We're next to each other. It's rickety. The lights are flickering. Um, it could stop at any moment. It's the Tower of Terror. Okay. Oh, that, Anyways, that really we effed me up as a child. So, so we go down to the scary seats. These are not cushion seats. These are like, think um, our high school auditorium seats without cushions. Like you're sitting, you have perfect posture in the movie theater. You're sitting up, watching the movie. Um, and anyways, so once that's the whole movie theater experience. The movie though, phenomenal. Um, I see you typing Tower of Terror in our notes section. Um, the movie was so good. My beef with recent rom-coms and like what I've been watching on Netflix and stuff, it's all about high school. What was that? Kristen? <laughs> what was that? Was that my, my bowl from MoMA? Is it broken? Okay. Um, so all of these rom-coms. <laughs> are we just going to keep all of this in? All of these rom-coms are about... <laughs> Hi, Kristen. Hello. Um, high, school high schoolers, okay? okay. Mm-hmm. And, talk and talk about, like, not relatable, not relatable content. content. So, so um, I just really enjoyed that it was about, like, two adults. <laughs> This is the worst episode watched, we've no, ever filmed. I watched the summer I turned pretty on an airplane um, with, like, other adults around me, and I've never been so embarrassed. Uh, just because, like, the show's about, like, high schoolers, and it's actually, like, cast by high schoolers. Because, like, in High School Musical, like, yeah. that was being played by people in their 20s. Like, yeah. this yeah. is a show about high schoolers played by high schoolers, I do believe. Um and I felt so embarrassed to be watching this in public because I was like, why? I don't know. That's so cringy. Yeah. Well, anyways, it was just really good. It was just like giving old classic rom-com, boy meets girl. They like each other. Then they don't like each other. Then they need wedding dates. And so then they f- pretend to be into each other. And then they actually become into each other. Classic rom-com plot. Just like 10 out of 10, I was laughing hysterically the whole time. The thing I like about a rom-com is that you know what's going to happen. You know it's going to be a happy ending, and I like watching movies that have happy endings. I mean, and talk about Sydney Sweeney. I mean, can you get a more beautiful actress? No. 
The answer is no. Just stunning. Stunning. <laughs> I don't know. Stunning. Don't know how to say that. Stunning. In, in an Irish accent. But yeah, just phenomenal. Yeah, I, I need to take dad to the movies because I owe him a movie date as uh, that was his, it was a present for something. I believe his birth. I took dad to the movies when I was home last and, um, so I just accidentally, oh no, I didn't. I thought I deleted our shared notes app. Um, I took dad to the movies when I was home and we saw Wonka and we did not know it was a musical until it started. You know, it's the, and they were saying, probably one of the craziest things I've ever done is, um, I saw the Lynn manuel Miranda movie, which is called Hamilton with you. <laughs> And obviously, I knew it was a musical. What I didn't know, like, because Kinsey was so into this musical for a very long time. And then mom, like, got us tickets to go see it. And I'm sitting down. The show starts. And it's a wrap. I, it is. I like, because I had said, like, oh, I want to go in blind. Like, I want to be fully surprised. I, yeah, may it be known that I told her, like, hey, you might want to look at the lyrics first. Just to, like you know know what they're talking about yeah it was an insane choice that i made and i do regret it i did love like the moment of being completely shocked and surprised um just because this is not what i expected in any way um but then as it was like going on i have the thing where like i just cannot tell what words are in music ever um, so I had no idea what anyone was saying. And so, like, I wish I had had context. Because now that I know the songs, I'm like, oh, I could have definitely appreciated this more in the moment. Yeah. yeah. Definitely seeing musicals is something I want to do more of while living here. Because I really love musicals. Mm-hmm, me too. Mom always made sure that when we were coming to New York or Chicago growing up, that we always had some sort of like cultural aspect to our trip and it was usually seeing a musical but also going to museums um okay i'm just looking through what we had already talked about um but th- we've already gone in new in different <laughs> directions i know hamilton did not come up the first time we tried to record this episode no I either did the phone call or my cat breaking my apartment. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. Is Martine old okay? I hope so. I think if something was actually wrong, I heard Kristen in there cleaning it up. I think she would tell me. Yeah. Um, but speaking of pets, <laughs> yes, <laughs> clearly we have to film more than earlier than 8 p.m., because, like, when I come from a whole day of work of thinking and then I have to sit down and keep thinking, it's clearly really hard for me. But all I had to say about our parents' pets aging, um, our parents have three dogs. There is Scout, who's, like, six. She's good to go for a while. And she's spoiled, spoiled rotten to the core. Yes. Then there's Sophie. And I think she's, like, 12. She's a chocolate lab. So she's she's up there for for her breed, mm-hmm. and then we have Zaylini, Zaylee, <laughs> Zippy, Zippy Poo, <laughs> Zucchini, and she is um, elderly. She's older than us. She's not really older I think than she's us. She's sixteen. She's yeah. She could drive. She might be seventeen. Yeah, that's insane. Like, and I just every time I let her out, I'm like, she could be dead. Um, and then I shake that's her silly. a little bit. No, it's like she's like hardly breathing every time. And then I see like a tiny little bit of movement. And every time she's in such a deep sleep that it's like it takes her like a full moment to like open her eyes. And so every time I'm just like a little terrified. What I have to say say about those two dogs um, is what we lacked in grandparents. Oh, I'm alone. Um, Those dogs really made up for it. You know, so <laughs> I unfortunately we lost our grandparents really early, and um, oh oh, a cat has entered the chat. Yeah, he was just so <laughs> talking about our grandparents passing. I thought he might also be dead, um, but he was alive. Um, but yeah, no. Do you like? I think often that like I wonder if my life would be different if my grandparents were alive. 
I do like, too. Do you think I also, I think, I don't, I actually don't think your life would be all that different. Um, Where would um, I live? You know, true. Fair. Um, but I'm thinking like you'd still be a farmer. And I think I would still probably live in New York or a city and probably still work in museums. Like, I don't think my life would change like that drastically. Um, but just like for context, um, I don't know how old you were, but I was like seven or eight when I lost our grandparents. So like pretty young. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah. Cause I think our dad's parents passed b- a, a ways before, um, our mom's mom, she, but she had Alzheimer's. Yeah. So she didn't know us like, yeah. yeah, as, so like we were like elementary school for all pretty much of like, of, yeah, like having a conscious, if that's the right way to phrase that. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's and it's less. I don't, I don't usually think about like how my life would be different, but I do think about I would love to ask them their opinions of me, of <clears throat> my life, of my job. Um, I don't think that they would have predicted this. Maybe they would have. Maybe they saw me and they're like, that young one. She's going to be crazy. She's going to be crazy. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There's also a little part of me that's like, um, I don't have to go through that sadness because I always think about our parents mm-hmm. passing, like, all the time. And so then there's a little part of me that's like, well, my grandparents are already gone and I didn't really know them much. So um, that is, that is true. I think triggering. That's, I think that's, I uh, yeah, like I had said the first time around, um, a lot of my friends lost their grandparents kind of recently because they're at that age they're in you know early mid-20s where they're losing grandparents and it is kind of a relief to know that like I don't have to go through that you know I don't have to lose someone that close to me for like you know the foreseeable future like this time being um so that is that is definitely a relief but I do wish I could just like get their takes on some things yeah I would like some hot takes um just on so many things um, a hot take of you is that you owe of a drastic life change. Yeah. So this came up because yesterday I FaceTimed Zoe, um, at like nine thirty, and I was like, I need to do something with my life. <laughs> I need to cut my hair. I need to get a tattoo. I need to move cities. I need to, you know, have a second cat. I. Uh, some context have been a student for 23 years if you count preschool so I you know preschool elementary school high school college master's degree no stops bus like, club another <laughs> club plane <laughs> another club degree degree, degree, degree another, degree. another degree. degree and so um this is my first semester not taking classes it's not a and semester. I, it, <laughs> well no this is my first semester because I took class last semester i know but this isn't your semester like now you're out there's no more semesters left this is sorry this is my first january January, not taking a class um or having classes you know starting up and i felt like i needed to do something drastic but i just do i like a big change zoe is you know her hair's looked very much like how it looks now for the last 25 years i'm like yep I want to trim I want the same color like it's always the exact same thing where it's like Kenzie will go to the hairdressers I would go in I'd look at the book and I'd be like I want that one and like <laughs> come out with some like <laughs> weird bob with that like flipping up on the ends with bangs and I do like last this time last year I cut bangs yeah but like okay let's talk about my bang trauma because do you remember the time that we both cut bangs at the same time Yes, and I liked my bangs. Yeah, and because... Don't say. I was... Don't say. No, I was the test dummy for this hairdresser. She cuts my bangs. <laughs> I can tell she's not loving them. I'm not loving them. <laughs> Kinsey pops up, and she goes, I'm going to cut them a little bit cuter. I don't, think, I don't think those were the words she said. I That's the words I internalized. She may have said differently, but like... She knew she needed to switch up what she was doing. I think we have different face shapes and different parts. All I know is we walked in not having bangs, and you walked out a happy and adorable customer. I walked out traumatized. But also, like as a person that would never say I'm unhappy, I just went outside and then wept in the car. And 
And I uh, see, and like last year, I was like, I'm gonna cut bangs, and everyone was like, Don't do it, that's horrible. And then I cut bangs, and everyone was like, Oh my gosh, Kenzie, I love your bangs. Yeah. And then I rocked bangs for six months, and then I now I clearly I don't have bangs anymore. Your hair um, grows at an astonishing rate, N- like faster than I've ever it's seen before. It's grown today as we've been FaceTiming. <laughs> it was shorter the first time we recorded it was. <laughs> Mine had less gray in it. <laughs> um, I do. I, yeah, I've been I I've, I've been blessed with fast growing hair. It's really nice. I'm grateful for it. Mm-hmm. Um, although I do fear that I might be balding right here, but that's for a different time. Back to Zaylee, our sweet Zayze. Zaylee. Um, do you want to share? Oh my goodness! With yes. The sister friends. So the first okay. night we had I, Zaylee. I have I have deep memories of the first time that we got Zaylee and the first time we got Sophie. Sophie, because I caused a car incident. Um, I backed into someone. I remember the first time we got Sophie. It was horrible. Um, but uh, when we got Zaylee for the first time, I took it upon myself. I was like, she's sleeping with me, folks. Like, I'm kind of this dog in because my sister is afraid of everything. She sleeps in my bed until she's 100. Um, she'd still be in there if I, if I don't allow her to be there. And she lived within the state. Um, but yeah, so we'll deep dive into Kenzie wanting to sleep in my room until she was 40, um, at a different time maybe, but, um, in this particular occasion, first night I had this little teensy tiny dog and mom rightfully was like, she can't like hold herself through the night. She's going to have to go to the bathroom. So like, if you want her to sleep with you, you have to get up and take her out in the middle of the night. And I think I had the experience that new mothers have of getting up every couple hours the entire night. And at first it was like, oh, okay, I have to let her out. And then I was like, oh, okay, I have to let her out again. And then it was like by the seventh time I was like frantic. I was like, I can't believe I'm doing this again. Like I need, like I felt the lack of sleep. And in the morning, like I think maybe it was on like the last time I took her out at like 6 a.m., mom had also just happened to be awake and was like oh like how's it going and i'm like oh, i haven't slept <laughs> in hours and you slept through the entire thing yeah I, yeah I don't remember any of that yeah i was just my ability when i'm sleeping next to somebody and i feel safe i can sleep i'm out but for a little bit of context i was a really anxious child and I had really vivid dreams of someone coming in and taking me from my bed or having a, our house caught on fire and everyone got out except for me and I was trapped and I was just really scared. And so I slept with Zoe until I think I was like 11 or 12 and Zoe was in high school and she was like, you cannot sleep in here anymore. This is weird. It has to end. <laughs> and, um, and it didn't end. I went and I slept on the floor outside my parents bedroom um because I was just like still I don't think I slept in my own bed until I was like I'm not kidding like 15 yeah do you maybe 14 do you remember um when you came back from Kimber's house and you had watched the it movie because you wouldn't tell me at first what was wrong but I knew you were scared (laughs) <laughs> and you come into you 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 asked me to come into the bathroom with you while you showered and like in our bathroom there's like the room with the shower itself and there's the room with like the sinks and so I just had to be in the room with the sinks and then it like wasn't until you were in the shower and you like whispered you're like I watched a movie about a clown <laughs> and like I think I think it was just like maybe the next two days or so um, I had to accompany you to your showers because you were so afraid <laughs> of a clown coming up the drain to get you. See, I was afraid of clowns. I was also afraid of not... Of, I was afraid of disappointing our parents. And I knew if mom found out I watched an Aria movie as like a nine-year-old, she was going to be really mad at me. And so I, I don't know if I was more scared of the clown or having mom find out that I watched an Aria movie. But, yeah, I was just a very anxious, I was an anxious gal. Um, Luckily, I kind of got past that. I can, like, 
you know, live in New York by myself and I'm okay. Yeah, I was but, uh, I was anxious, but in different ways. Like, I always remember being so afraid of someone p- forgetting to pick us up from, like, piano or gymnastics or baton. Or, like, we were involved in absolutely every act. For a, every yeah, extracurricular we were doing everything. activity a person can be involved in and i was gymnastics i was always just so terrified someone would forget to pick me up and that it was in our defense it was before cell phones so it's like what do you do you have to go so inside and like ask to use the phone like i was terrified of that yeah that's so interesting because we were never really forgotten except for one time that dad did forget us but it was because he was in a minor car yeah, accident he was, yeah he was like held up he was like fine and someone just like drove us home because like all we had to do was ask someone it was like hey our dad's not coming <laughs> well actually we didn't know they <laughs> called him and then he was like yeah i'm just like i'm gonna be late but it's gonna be a while so she's like lived a block away and she's like i'll just take him home um and so like it worked out fine but, like, I can remember, like, I would be scared when I got to a place. I can remember in preschool, it was like you had to go wait outside in a hall, and then they'd let you run out when they saw the person that was coming to get you. And I was, like, just always so afraid that no one would be coming to get me. Yeah. Sorry, I was distracted by my door closing. Um, yeah. I also, and maybe this is where we cut it off, was really scared of ghosts because of church. Now hear me out. What? We grew up Presbyterian, okay? So we believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, okay? And this Holy Ghost is everywhere. He's all seeing. He's all doing. And I was like, we have a ghost in our house that's watching us at all times. And that really freaked me out. Yeah, our church was scary. Not like in the daytime but like i think everyone there was like a little shiver that would run down your spot like i remember specifically like we like you think it was like haunted yes i thought it was haunted i thought it was yeah. known fact like i like there was no if sandra but on if it was haunted like in my soul i knew because well, like also I mean, there was like feels. there was a place where they had like ashes and stuff so it was ashes like, yeah so like it's a cemetery essentially i remember being little and the older kids that were like in sunday school but like the class above us would be like do you want to go see the ashes yeah and i'm like what yeah there was yeah and like i can remember specifically one time we had a piano recital and like we had gone to maybe practice on the piano because like we had our recitals there Mm -hmm. and um i like finished playing and mom was in a different area of the church and i like rent it like it was like you know how like you're running yeah. up from a basement and it's dark and you're like oh ha, ha, the ghost like oh. i sprinted in yeah. like a, a ways and the whole time like it wasn't like is there something behind me it was like there is something <laughs> behind it's me. like what is behind what me? is consuming I me know. in this it was it was kind of a spooky church very spooky holiday. um but anyways i was never scared of paranormal activity until I was taught about the Holy Ghost, and then I was like, we got ghosts following us around. And then I did have a big spout of being really scared of ghosts as, like, a little Yeah, we need to table that conversation, because in the home that I'm currently in right now, uh, my cousin... Was once very haunted, but now is not. Yeah, my cousin had many, like, and she was not, like, a... She's a very level-headed, logical person, and had many ghosty experiences and i'm a little pissed that i haven't been haunted <laughs> i know it's like they're picking favorites well and like they knew her like so this i live in my grandparents old house and like they knew aj like into college years for her i think because uh, they're quite yeah. a bit older than us and so like she's had ghosty experience but then she moved out and then her son had ghosty experiences at their new house so i think the ghosts got packed up and moved with them i was gonna say because i lived with you for a summer and i was trying to summon some ghosts and nothing came to me yeah this house used to be a lot more spooky halloween but after we've like renovated everything it's yeah now it's not a scary at all but like i don't know it's a little danger Spooky scary skeletons. skeletons. Da, 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 da. Okay, well, I think Shouldn't we're going to wrap it up there, and we are going to pray to the Holy Ghost that when I 
click the end of this this time it saves to my computer and if you don't say this the podcast is over, over we're done we're never doing it again <laughs> three okay two, one. bye, bye.